So hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being here with us again. We are here at the Expo Riva show. So um, today on this event, we are going to talk about probably the main hot topic uh, for the next five years, that is sustainability. So to talk about this, we asked William Wong to join us. Hello, William. Hi, welcome. Hi, how are you? So William is an expert in sustainability. And you know what, William, do you mind to introduce yourself and give us a couple of details about what you do and what is your career? Well, uh, thanks, Alberto. Um, I started the footwear industry back in 1991. And uh, um, I also co-founded the Global Footwear Sustainability Summit um, back in 2012. So over the years, I've been uh, involved in a lot of activities and research in sustainability, especially in the footwear industry. Good. So William, um, let's go straight to the, to the topic. We know that this industry, uh, I'm talking about fashion industry in general, uh, it's probably one of the most polluted that we have. So probably after the oil industry, for sure, one of the worst in this, uh, in this topic. So there are many problems connected to how we produce and how we get to retail. So let me ask you something. And, and you know what? On the other side, we have customers that are getting more and more involved on this. So they want to buy products from brands that take care of our planet. So what is going to happen? Do you want to give us like what you see in the actual scenario and what you think is going to happen in the next five years? Well, first of all, um, over the years, I've been doing the Global Footwear Sustainability Summit. Um, we've been talking a lot about uh, the manufacturing side, starting from raw materials, um, chemicals, process, and also uh, the efficiency of uh, making shoes. And of course, over the years, we found that uh, there are lots of sustainable materials we can use, but unfortunately, lots of those are quite expensive, and, and not all the brands or uh, retailer are willing to try those expensive materials. And uh, when it comes to recycling of the shoes, uh, it's very difficult because the, the, there are too many components on most of the shoes to separate those components to be recycled uh, actually is one of the hardest things to do and uh, it's not quite efficient uh, to recycle any shoes at the moment. So hopefully we can uh, push for those side. And some topic we rarely talk about uh, in our uh, sustainability summit actually is on the retail side, uh, starting from packaging, logistic, and also uh, the how to deal with the shoes that the retailer cannot sell and uh, whether they destroy them or how they can be used, uh, those unsold shoes is a, a big question mark. Okay, and, and you know, one of the big problems that I see is that from, from one side we have customers that want brands involved in the sustainable process, taking care of the planet, but from the other side, you were mentioning retail, our customer now, they're super spoiled by a lot of other, of a lot of companies. So when we buy now, we want to press the button and receive, you know, the product in one second. Uh, and we want to buy three pair of shoes so that we can check we want to fit the most. And then we want to give back with a big problem with the return logistics connected to this. So what do you think is the sweet spot uh, in, in which we can take care of the planet at the same time, you know, being able to serve this new emerging expectations? Well, is, um, first of all, is the consumer education or communication. We can talk about how we communicate with our consumers. Uh, well, in, in the old days, we loved to drive big cars, and now people prefer to drive electric cars or hybrid or um, we keep our lights on and now we try to turn as much lights off as possible and as well as we use good insulation material for buildings so we don't have to keep the uh, air conditioner on all the time. So this is the uh, uh, mindset of our society. So if we, we can educate our consumers that things that we can do just a little bit more to save the planet, and it's every single person's responsibility. Like I said, um, 
for the online retail uh, is is very difficult, tricky question right now. Uh, people have difficulty finding the right fitting for their shoes when they buy shoes online. So they, because the policy said uh, free return, so they order three sizes. So if you were size 41, you probably order size 40, size 41, size 42. Hope that one of the pairs uh, that fit you, so you return two pairs. Instantly, there's 66% return rate for online retailer. And it costs huge amount of money uh, on one side for the retailer, uh, as well as the waste of logistic and packaging that uh, which is really bad for the environment. So these are the things that uh, uh, the retailers, online retailers or the brands can do is to find ways or invest money to do some virtual fitting uh, system that I think they're widely, widely available now. There are many systems available in, in the market to do the online fitting or the virtual fitting. And you can, you can drastically reduce the return rate. On one side, the retailer can save lots of money. As far as I know, it costs around eight to 10 euros to return one pair of shoes in, uh, uh, in Europe to, to the retailer. And also it, they save a lot of packaging and carbon emission for the uh, sending and returning of the shoes. That's interesting because the solution means that we don't have to find a solution just on the way that we produce, or on, but you can find it on the business model, you can find you know, digital applications that can help to change the wrong habits that probably we, we started to use. L let me ask you something in terms of trends and design. So we saw different examples of how companies are trying to dematerialize shoes so that they can be better upcycle or, or recycle at the end of the process. Do you have some kind of examples that you can provide of companies that are doing this right or, or, or suggestions that you can give for all the manufacturers that are providing the new generation of shoes? Well, there are quite a few brands. They market themselves as the most sustainable shoes, which is good, which I think that really draw attention from the consumers. Uh, either, I don't blame if some of them are pushing a little bit over uh, exaggerating about their uh, sustainability. Uh, somebody called it uh, greenwashing. I personally, I don't mind that because uh, we need people to say things loudly to draw the attention from the consumer. And of course, they can, uh, if they're, they're greenwashing, they're only uh, talking and not doing things, the consumer will realize uh, very soon. So I will let the consumer judge whether these brands are greenwashing or not. But on the other hand, um, myself and uh, a team of uh, a, fr a group of friends of uh, mine, that we are trying to develop some shoes that uh, as use minimum um, amount of uh, materials, I mean, uh, uh, limited uh, selection of materials. So we limited material to only one material for upper and one material for outsole. So by that way, we can separate those materials easily and have them recycle after the consumer finished using the shoes. And at the moment, recycling for shoes is very difficult, as I mentioned earlier, to, to separate the, the components just way too hard. And the amount of the material saved from a pair of shoes is not a lot. So at the moment, we try to find ways to minimize the amount or, or the number of materials to be used on shoes. That means that would limit uh, the design <laughs> it would be a, quite a challenging task for designer to develop a, a, a new design for shoes with only one or two materials. So let's go on with this because I'm curious. Uh, if you can try to, to, um, to describe the most sustainable shoes on, on your point of view. Okay, so for example, now we were talking about design, so few materials, easier to, to, get, uh, to get recycled. What kind of other characteristics do you think that the shoes shoe should have to be considered like a sustainable shoe? Well, the best shoes, of course, will be 100% 100, 100 biodegradable, 
uh, when I grew up, I, I I was born in China. My parents, I came from a very poor family. My parent, my mom used old um, cloth from from trousers to make shoes, and those are one hundred percent cotton. They've been worn for years, maybe from my my uncles, my father, or my brothers. They, they their trousers got really uh, worn out, so they cut the material up and then make them into shoes. And those cotton would definitely be biodegradable. So these these are the way that when we go back to old times, we realize that the old days when we grew up actually uh, is actually more sustainable way to to living. That, that, that's that's interesting because you're describing a pair of shoes as, as, as an upcycle of the fashion industry. So it can be like yeah. an interesting suggestion for designers to rethink maybe where they take their materials to start to to build to, to build new shoes. Um, let's let me ask you something uh, like with a broader view on how we produce our shoes. Right now, China probably is producing like a third of the global production of shoes. Yeah. Um, so right now, the role uh, of the country is like mainly involved in the production. So what do you think and how do you think this is going to change uh, in the next uh, five to 10 years? Is it going to be the same role or do you, or do you forecast like a different uh, scenario? Well, um, my personal point of view is definitely going to change. Um, first of all, the cost making shoes, the cost of making shoes in China is uh, has already gone up significantly, and the reason we still maintain a reasonably price, still competitive, uh, is mainly because we have very efficient supply chain that uh, none of the neighbor countries can uh, compete with the efficiency. But the further down the road, with um, the slow uh, birth rate in China, the young generation from China no longer want to work in the factory. It will be harder and harder to find workers working in a shoe factory or any factories across the board. So the actual manufacturing will sooner or later will move out of China. Not only shoes, but uh, most consumer products rely on lots of uh, labor intensive work. So because China has a great uh, supply chain system. Uh, I do think that the development R&D will still happen in China. But uh, once these R&D done by Chinese manufacturers or Taiwanese manufacturers, the actual manufacturing would probably move to Vietnam, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Philippines, those countries, or even go all the way to Turkey or uh, uh, Eastern European countries. That, that's my personal uh, feeling that that's how the, uh, the industry would, would go for, uh, from now. Okay, so going, going on with this vision, um, we have here, and a lot of manufacturers and brands are listening to you right now, uh, what is your suggestions? Uh, part of them, they're manufacturing there, or at least they're having connection um, well, with China. So what, what is your suggestion in terms of going in the right direction for the next few years? So let, let, let's finish this talk with, with some guidelines you would like to, to provide so that they can rethink maybe their traditional way of uh, designing, uh, producing, and selling shoes in a sustainable way. Uh, from a sustainability point of view, I do think that uh, we should minimize the packaging or the minimize the logistic uh, I mentioned earlier. So I, uh, I do have another team working with me is to find a way to use uh, technology to monitor manufacturing. So a pair of shoes, not necessarily to uh, finish the whole production in one country. So my, my thinking would be uh, after development, after the retailer confirm a particular order, the materials would be consolidated uh, either in China or somewhere like Bangladesh. So the shoe upper would be made in a country where they're not only cheap labor, but have skillful and uh, lots of available labor uh, that they can do the stitching. 
for example, like Bangladesh or uh, Pakistan or India or even Turkey. So after the shoe upper is made, the shoe upper can be shipped to a nearby country. For example, in Europe, you either send to Turkey or send to Eastern Europe countries to have the shoe upper assembled with the outsole, which can be done very much uh, by robot now. So the cutting can be done by robot. Uh, the finishing, the lasting and uh, soling can be done by robot and as well as packaging. So the main bottleneck for making shoes is the stitching part, which we need a country like Bangladesh or Indonesia or Vietnam. They have a lot of uh, skillful stitching workers to produce the upper and then send to a country near to the uh, consumer market. So once the shoes are still in the upper or component, that the logistic cost will be much lower because it, it really takes a small amount of space. And then once it's made, it's in shoe box and then it's closer to the consumer market. So the logistic cost will be drastically reduced and of course, saving lots of uh, carbon emission. So this is the, um, the idea that I have that we hope that we can find a way to use uh, AI or uh, blockchain to find a solution to monitor all this uh, manufacturing in different countries and make it more efficient. I think there are a few American brands already doing things like this, uh, that they make the shoe upper in Asia, send back to the United States and have the shoes made in the United States and labeled it as made in USA. And uh, I think that's how it's done now. So, uh, you know what? Thinking to, to, to the, the, the audience that we have here, uh, a lot of them, they're like small manufacturer, medium-sized manufacturer. So you are mentioning words like uh, AI, robotics, blockchain, um, like digital logistics. Uh, so th there is a lot of new words, a, a new way of thinking, not just new way of working that they have to assume at something part of their future. So uh, probably there, there's a lot to evolve uh, in, in this process, so there's a lot to do. J just the last thing, um, what kind of warnings do you would like to provide? What, what are the problems that they can, they can have when they start this process of moving on a more sustainable, and in this case, digital and robotic production? Well, um, coming from a manufacturing uh, business myself, the first important thing is make sure that your customer appreciate what you do. And uh, if you invest a lot of money and then you, your customer said, oh, no, I, I'm not paying uh, five cents more for making it more sustainable materials or I'm not paying um, extra for making the shoes more efficient or more, uh, better quality control, things like that, then it's a waste of time and money to, to invest. So it's the most important thing is to communicate with your customers uh, or if you, your, your, uh, you have your own brand and sell to your uh, customer directly, then uh, make sure your customer will appreciate what you do. And of course, we all want to do, uh, we all want to be more sustain uh, sustainable. So marketing is important too. Because you yeah. can be sustainable, but you have to explain the way that you are sustainable and how, and yeah. how, and the customer the, the need to understand your efforts in in that direction. Go ahead. Sorry. Correctly. Yeah. With yeah. with the COVID, the economy going to be tough, and, and people will have a tight wallet. So of course, the retailer will have more competition on their side, probably more fears than the manufacturing side. So um, I really doubt the retailer willing to uh, push their retail price higher for making sustain sustainable shoes because some, a lot of those current retailers, they are focused on the mass market. The mass market means they, um, the actual consumer are lower income people. They are not willing to pay higher. They, they only want to pay lower. So yeah. this is uh, the most difficult part at the moment. 
Yeah, probably matching convenience and sustainability is the big challenge for this industry, but we know the direction yeah. is just one. And you have described it like super very well. Thank you very much, William. It was, it was like super Thank pleasure you, to be with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good show. And so bye-bye. Thank you very much for everyone that was listening to us today. Ciao.